Yeah, Bill has a, it's him. I mean, a lot of it is him. He went to, Shaq went to Montana to see him. To get Shaq to go to Montana, yeah. something special to be going on over there. I don't know what was going on, but I'm going to investigate. Shaq, Phil Jackson. Yeah, listen, I need you to come to Butte. Okay. <laughs> What? It's the third shack on the left. <laughs> Look for the blunderbuss in the front porch. Man. Uh, my man. Yeah, that's but if they win it, I got to take my hats off to the yeah, guy, man. Where are they win? 25 out of 26. That's hard to do. How From CBS to Chicago, Come Disco presents Overtime with Mike North. Tonight's guest, Chicago Bull legend, John Paxson. And now, your Emmy Award-winning host from The Score, Sports Radio 1160, Mike North! Welcome to Count Disco's Overtime with Mike North from Basta Pasta on the northwest side of Chicago, right here on CBS 2 Chicago. I can't believe the last time this guy played was 1993 and 94. Time has really flown. He is the announcer now for the Chicago Bulls. He still lives in the Chicagoland area. There's rumors about him coaching there, coaching there. We'll find everything out about our buddy Johnny Paxson. Hello, John. Hello, buddy. Nice to see you, John. Nice to see you, Sit down. 93-94 already. It's been a while. I can't believe it. Time has flown. I mean, your kids, I mean, how old are your kids now? I have two boys that are 13 and 10, and when I stopped playing, they were real young. In fact, my oldest one, he has a, he remembers that I, you know, the fact that I played actually came to games occasionally. But my younger one, you know, he just sees things on tape every once in a while. Yeah, put in the tape again. <laughs> yeah, would you put in the tape of that shot again? <laughs> Let me see it again, Dad. So you, they asked to see the tape, or do you, no, I, after, after <laughs> dinner, when you have your jersey on, go... Tonight, tonight, kids, we're going to watch no, this. No, it's they, me. They, they, uh, they don't watch too much of my stuff, to no. be honest with you, no. They, they're, they're current. They, they like the guys that are in the league right now. Let's talk about current. Let's talk about you. I read something in the paper. I didn't believe it, but it was another ugly rumor. John Paxson might uh -huh. be an assistant coach for Tim Floyd. Did it say that exactly? It said something like that in the paper. Um, you know, that's, I guess that's out there. I, I, when this season ends, you know the, the Bulls' current situation, Jim Woldridge was their, uh, one of their assistants. Right. And he took the, the Kansas State job. Mm -hmm. and so there is an opening there. And I have gotten to know Tim well over the last two years, and I like him a lot. I think he's a real good basketball coach. Um, and at some point we might discuss it, but that doesn't mean that I want to get back into that thing. I, mean, I, I did it the one year on the, the best team in the history of the, the league, the yeah, 72 and 10. Yeah, you had to sit 10. in the back. Yeah, I did have to sit you in the back. You had to sit right. like in the second row. Right. All the other right. guys stood up front. But this there, time you'd be sitting in the first row? I, probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah there would be something to that, too. Um, but th there would have, at that time, I, I knew it wasn't right for me for a variety of reasons, and I'm not so sure that those reasons have changed. So, um, Why didn't you think it was right for you at that time? I just wasn't ready for the, uh, the entire consuming time commitment. You had to travel, though. Well, it, it's, it's, not, it's, what, it's what you do when you coach. I mean, mm -hmm. especially in the league today, the way it's set up and uh, the, the amount of, of work that goes into it and the scouting, it's, it's different than it was 20 years ago. There's so much information out there that uh, coaches and staffs can get at mm -hmm. and that really are responsible for. And, it becomes a, a very time-consuming job. And when it, when it, what it does, what it did for me that year, it took time away from what I wanted, and that was to be with my family a little bit more. And uh, it was a hard decision because I, I was working for Phil and, and the guys on that staff who I respected tremendously. And I went through that summer, actually coached the Bulls summer league team, but I knew that uh, I just needed to, to get away from it so I could, you know, kind of, get back to, to what was the most important thing to me, and that was being around my family. I mean, that, it's, it's really that simple, and I don't think that, that today when I, when I say that, it ha that hasn't changed. No, it's just like now you're traveling. No, people would say, well, wait, you're traveling now, but there's not as much time being used up, right? Right, and, and here's the situation. When, I, when there are days in between games, I have those days at home, and it's not that I have to be in the office. It's not that I have to be scouting, you know, out on the road doing something. I, I have those days with my family, and those, that's real important to me, and and the fact of the matter is that this job as an assistant or a head coach in the NBA, is a, it's a 12-month-a-year a job now. It's not something that you can say, well, 
once the season ends, I'm going to take off. It it's, doesn't work that way, especially the situation the Bulls are in now. They, they're going to have, when the season ends on April the 19th, they, they start planning for what becomes a very important summer, and they're going to work all through the summer to, to get this thing straight. So it, it's, not, uh, it's not like it once was. And so because of that, I, I uh, in 97, mm -hmm. you know, decided to walk away from it. And I, I'm telling you, that, hasn't, that probably hasn't changed. I tell you, it is going to be an important summer. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the Chicago Bulls and what's coming up for them with John Paxson. Back with more after this. Let's talk about this. The Chicago Bull fans have bought in to what Jerry Krause has wanted to do because on the radio every day there's no moaning, there's no complaining. You know, it seems to me, people I think have been pretty understanding after what happened uh, during the Jordan years. But I think the honeymoon's over this coming year. I think the draft's very important for this team, but also free agents. Do you believe all this bunk, and I think that's what it is, that no free agent's going to want to come here? I mean, they're still giving away a lot of money. I, since when did the NBA players stop worrying about money? Well, ultimately, you know, and agents are involved. Ultimately, it comes down to that. Uh, I, there are a lot of players that want to play in a certain situation, maybe a city or for a coach. But uh, the, the thing that Jerry has done is he, he's put the organization in a position to be much, much better next year. And, and to really, when you, when you look at the Eastern Conference right now, you, you have Miami, Indiana, New York, all good teams, but all older teams. Right. And... Toronto's a young basketball team, and they, they could lose Tracy McGrady. He's, mm -hmm. a, he's a free agent. If they lose him, then, you know, Vince Carter's a great player. But and Charles Oakley and Ken Willis, how old are, are they those now? Those are older guys, old right. Each? Right. If they're, yeah. if they're going yeah, yeah, to okay. win, if they're going to win, they need McGrady to be on their team. So, but he, he could leave. So the Bulls have put themselves in a position to start building around Elton Brand and Ron Artest. Mm -hmm. And they, they are in a position to have two very high draft picks, could be the number one pick. And Washington's pick, which could be in the you know somewhere in the four to they seven. They have three right? in the first round, possibly. Right, but two two in the top, probably five or mm -hmm. six, which is going to be very important. And then you can go out and get two free agents. So all of a sudden, you've gone from a team that has two good young players to maybe six total. And I, I think you're you're then in a position to be a playoff team and and to let those guys grow together. You know, I think that is as important as anything. If, if you can get a group mm -hmm. that has a chance to learn to play together. And that may take some years. It, it may take them two years. It may take them three to get where you ultimately want to get to. But I think it still gives them uh, the best opportunity to win. Let's say, let's just <coughs> fantasize here, McGrady comes to the Bulls and maybe a guy like Eddie Jones. And then you have three first-round picks. I believe the pressure should be on that basketball team to make the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Sure. There's no doubt about that. You're talking about... Eddie Jones uh, started on the Eastern Conference mm -hmm. All-Stars this year. Tracy McGrady's uh, maybe the best young player. Uh, they, one of the, the guy that came out of high school with the, the best upside. Right. So, yeah, th that's... that's uh, because, you know what, John? I mean, you look at it, and you look at the free agents. I've been here in Orlando, Orlando, Orlando. Well, you know what? There's only so many guys they can sign. So that's going to leave still some pretty high-tiered free agents, whether it be Ron Mercer, whether it be... Eddie Jones, I, we know we're going to get somebody. Well, the first thing that you do, it, because you have the money, you have to make the phone call to Tim Duncan and Grant Hill. You, mm -hmm. you have to, you can't just assume that they're not. Does Grant Hill want to stay in Detroit I don't his know. whole career? I, I, Does he see any upside to staying in Detroit? Well, that, that, that situation, when you look at it, they fired their coach this year, mm -hmm. and he's gone through a, a bunch of coaches, and there's really, they have no center. there's really been no stability. They, they were hurt. I, I thought that franchise was hurt maybe most just a few years ago when Alan Houston went to New York mm -hmm. because he was the type of guard that played with Grant Hill better than anybody else. Grant Hill could, could you could open the floor with Alan Houston out there, let Grant Hill penetrate, kick to a shooter, right. and, and they haven't had that dimension since. And then when uh, Brian Williams or Bison Daley left, right. they, they lose their He's their in big Egypt guy. right now walking right. around so with I, a snake charmer. I, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> and, I mean, and, who knows? And Grant's been very quiet about what he wants to do. So... You just don't know. That, that's what makes this all important. You, you have to have, when the summer comes along, July 1st, you're allowed to start talking mm -hmm. to free agents. You have to have a plan in place where your call goes to Tim Duncan's agent and you say, we want to get Tim here to Chicago. Let, let, us, let us have him here so we can show him what this organization is about. You, you never know. I mean, you, you can't assume that mm -hmm. the guy is going to go to Orlando or, or something. Well, how about else. Phil Jackson? Phil Jackson saying, why would you want to play for Orlando when you have 
one of the greatest cities uh, with all the beautiful museums and food, restaurant, everything else. Sure, the weather, but you know what? He said Orlando's a plastic city, and Doc Rivers got mad about that, but I was surprised there, Phil, Phil Jackson. He, um, he stated the case for, to play in Chicago. Well, Phil, I know he loved Chicago, and mm -hmm. he, he's, I think it was uh, admirable of him to, to say those things about the city, and he, uh, I think he makes good points. And what it's become now, it, it's become recruiting. It's like these guys, when they come out of high school and they get courted by colleges. You, you have to do that now. And it wasn't like that. And they're, they're years even ago. talking about Orlando's got no, doesn't have a state, state income, income tax. tax, right? But well, the guy's hey, going to make 15 every, million. But, but a year. here's the thing: every every organization is going to make a list sure. of the things that are in their favor, and the city's favor, and the organization's favor, and they're going to lay it out for this guy. And I mean, if you're Orlando, you're, you're you got to do that. You got to say, hey, look, you, you know, you, we don't have a state income tax, so. Uh, you know, that could play a part in it as well. Only, only, no one knows what's going to happen, but you have to do your best selling job and uh, you have to be ready to do it on July 1st. All right, we're going to take a break. More with Johnny Fax when we come back. Help us find homes for animals in need. To adopt this pet, call this number. A public service message from Overtime with Mike North. Before we get off the topic, I got to tell you, if I was Jerry Krause, you said a list of things, but I, also I'd stress to these guys, Orlando, with the same management, except for Pat Williams, they still got John Gabriel there, they had Shaq, they had Penny Hardaway, they had Nick Anderson, they had Horace Grant, they're all gone. So I'd stress that to them, at least the Bulls, they kept together to win six championships. Orlando couldn't even stay together to win one. Well, the, the key in that was Shaq leaving, and mm -hmm. he, he left for a city he wanted to be in and, you know, right. big dollars. And uh, that started the, the whole thing with them losing the rest of their players. And they, and they decided at that point that they probably had to, to go a different route. And to be honest with you, they, they've got a couple of real good young players down there. Darrell Armstrong is one of the, the most enjoyable guys in the right. league to watch. I really, really like to see him play. So, so they, have some, they obviously have some advantages. And I know John Gabriel is a, a terrific guy down there, and, and people really like him. You're doing radio now. Do you ever get the impression when you're doing radio that besides your family right now <laughs> nobody's listening? Uh, <laughs> there's probably there's probably some nights like that. Yeah, you uh, know you're playing Vancouver <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, I, it's it's been a difficult year for everybody, uh, the players, the coaches, uh, those of us who have to talk about the game for two and a half hours. Is it harder to do a game with a team like this than to do a game? When well, the team's on a roll? Well, uh, yeah, there's no question about that. Because you're always you're searching for positives in a situation that's not very positive. Especially that, when it's 123 to 78. Yeah, or yeah, the, other, the game against Houston was, right. was a bad one. But yeah, it's not like these guys aren't out there trying. They've only played a few games this year where their effort has mm -hmm. been disappointing. And, and I give, you have to give the coaching staff credit yep. for that. Because it, this is, you know, th this is a tough year for guys to go through. And I think the, the one thing that's, you look at the, the young guys on this team. Elton's played a lot of minutes, and he's gotten valuable experience. But he's also not had someone there to push him either, uh, where Tim could maybe point out some things to him by sitting him. You know, where there's a guy that I can put him back in and, or put him in Elton's place. And, and but has he had to have a guy pushing him? He seems to me to be a kid that calls out well, I know what I'm 100%. saying. I guess what I'm saying, oh, he does. But what I'm saying is maybe from like a lesson standpoint. Okay. You know, this is, you know, I want you to defensive rebound a little bit better tonight, Elton. But if he's not doing that, I have somebody I can put in. But Tim mm -hmm. can't look down very far and, and put a guy in because you take Elton out and you, you lose the, the one real post-up threat and inside scorer that you have. So, but, but he's had the opportunity to learn this year, and uh, I think it's going to make him a better player. Now, I, I don't know once there's more talent around him if he'll put up the numbers he's putting up this year. I mean, he's averaging about 19 a game, and maybe when better players are put around him, that number might go down, but that, that doesn't mean he's not still uh, going to be a solid player. See, I player. thought it was, once Kukoc left, I thought that his numbers were going to go down or that his they, shooting percentage would go down, and I'm shocked. I mean, it seems like he's stepped up even more now. He has. In fact, uh, I, I, he's averaging right around 22 or 23 since the Tony Kukoc trade, which, you know, is, is I, I thought, in my mind, if I were a team, once Tony left, I would double Elton a lot, you know, mm -hmm. just change it up on him, give him different looks. Yeah, but then you're leaving guy. Chris Ancy open. <laughs> well, and Chris, well, hey, Chris is one of the few guys that can make a permanent <laughs> shot, too. So, uh, but, but I thought they'd do that. But Elton, is, he's figuring things out. I mean, slowly but surely, he's figuring out the game. Uh, but he's got a long way to go, and I, I think he'd admit that as a young player. Your plans, do you someday 
envision yourself being a head coach in, at any level? I don't know. I, I, I don't... Uh... See, there's something going on with you, Pax. I think that you know something. Don't start something. You're always trying to start something with me. I understand, but see? you know what? I think you got the talent. Well, you got the motivation. You're a handsome guy. Is that you have to be handsome to coach? Well, then... Hey, yeah. I think it helps. You know what I mean? You look at Johnny Pax, and he's looking good tonight. When you're losing by 20, you might as well look good while you're doing it. Yeah, I, I, I love the game. And, but, but like I told you mm -hmm. earlier, there's a, a commitment there that you have to sacrifice something. And... I'm just not sure I'm, I'm ready for that right now. I've always kind of thought in the so back of my mind. you got too much money in the bank. No, no, it's, no it's, not even, it's not even about that. It's, it's, if, I've always thought that maybe on the most basic level, coaching high school kids would be what yeah. I want to do. Just because I, you have some real influence with them. and You can teach right. them the game. And I, and I think teaching the game, even in the year that I was a part of it, when I got to coach the summer league team, that to me was fun. Well, you're right. And so may, maybe something like that. But I, I'm not thinking that far ahead. The game's not going to change. And I think... Coach an Indiana high school team, and I'll be your guy. I'll be like in Hoosier. I'll be Shooter. I'll be Dennis Hopper. I'll be on the bench like this, just looking up whenever someone. That would be cool to coach high well, school, I think. You know what? I have a lot of respect for high school coaches. Oh. I had a camp this past summer, and we had 10 head high school coaches for each session, mm -hmm. or each week. And these guys know as much about the game as most did people Did you learn do. from them? I did, and, and I, I, I respect what they're doing night in and night out. So... Um, it was, uh, I, I've got a lot of respect for anybody who puts their, their life into this game, because I, I really do love it, and I, I've had some great teachers of the game, so I think I understand it, uh, but you, you really have to be committed to wanting to coach, and you have to take the other things in your life and maybe put them mm -hmm. aside, and I, I, like I said, I'm not ready for that. Right, we're going to talk about commitment when we come back with John Paxson. <laughs> Next week, now I've been really pushing this kid. I really have. I've been putting pressure on the Bears. And what better way to put pressure on the Bears than to fly the kid in? Sebastian Janikowski, the place kicker for Florida State, is going to be on our show next week. Hey, we need a kicker. Can't you watch it? The Bears are talking about, you know, we got to get a linebacker, we got to get a safety. They lost four games because of their kicker. And you got the, maybe the best kicker in the last 10, 15 years. So I figure we'll bring in the big strapping Polish kid with the bald head and sit him right there and we'll talk to him for a half hour so it should be a lot of fun. We're with Johnny Pax and commitment, Michael Jordan. You said it. I think Jerry Krause, Michael Jordan made this statement the other day and I love Michael, but he says, I'm not going to come to the Wizards game here in Chicago because I don't want to think or let Jerry Krause know that I'm looking over his shoulder. Like he's going to steal some from Jerry. Jerry Krause works hard. He does his job. Michael Jordan flies in, flies out, does what he's got to do. Do you believe that you can build a winner with the way Michael's doing it? Well, he, he's just, he's new to the job. And um, I've seen Jerry work. I, my brother Jim is the GM in Cleveland. This is his first year. And, right. and Cleveland's had a, a tough year. Sure I, I, I understand the demands of that job. It's really a day-to-day -day job. How many job. hours is Jimmy putting in? He, he puts in a ton. I mean, it's, he's, it, it, you're, you're basically monitoring your team, keeping, trying to understand what's going on, why mm -hmm. things are happening, why aren't you playing well, why are you playing well. Uh, you got to listen to your coach and see what uh, he feels and wants. Plus, you're responsible for the draft and the kids coming out of school and all mm -hmm. the things that are involved there. So there's a lot going on. But, you know, Michael's new to this, and I, I would never count him out. Mm -hmm. And I, there, there's no, no rule that says you've got to be a guy that puts 20 hours a day mm -hmm. in. And, and you know, that, I think sometimes that would drive you See, drive I think it would have been cool if he went and coached him, too. Because I believe he'd get their attention. Well, he would. And he was in some practices early, I know. But uh, he brought in Daryl Walker, who he, he's a good friend of and, and knows and respects. And uh, these guys actually lately have responded a little they bit have. To, to what they're, they're trying to I do. i got to ask you about that because he can get away with playing. Can you imagine? But now, there's a lot of guys that are coaching in the league that played. Imagine Riley putting on the Heat <laughs> uniform now and going out there. Or, or Phil, when he was with, <laughs> let me show Luke Longley, because Phil played center. I mean, Michael's the only guy that can really get away with that and succeed. He's better than any other players he's got. Well, he can, he can challenge more uh -huh. than any, anybody else. He certainly can challenge better than any GM can. He can, he can look the guys in the eye, and uh, you have to respect uh, what, he's, what he's trying to do. I mean, it, Michael loves the game, and, and if he wants to be a part of it, I think it's good for the league, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, that he's involved and uh, didn't just walk away from it totally. So he, he's got his work cut out for him because Washington, as far as the cap and some of the players they have, 
they're they're going to be in you know they're going to be in trouble for a while. But you know if he sticks with it, you, you never know. How many FD Quill and this it looks like Phil Jackson may not be the doorman at the Four Seasons. I mean this guy. I've never understood your your point on that. Yeah, Michael with you. Jordan. Well, now he's taken it? this lousy Laker team and molded this talent. I don't well, know how he's done it. Uh, no, he is he is going to win. If he wins, I got to give him his kudos. But well, even if he doesn't, you got to look at what he's done this year. Well, Del Harris team. won 63 with them. Well. But, Kurt but, Rambis but, you're look, but look at the way they're playing. They're and, playing and, great. And, I got to give them credit. But they're, they're one injury away to, from a key with a, uh, a key player that uh, he's back to being at the four seasons but, of Jack goes down. But I'll tell you, he, he's he's got a feel for the game yeah. that most coaches don't have, and that if they win it to me, that's what separates them. See, John, for me, they better if they better win it if he wants to get the Cardinals. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, you're a winner. Thank you, Mike. I'll tell you what, John Hanson, next week. Sebastian Janikowski right here. I want to thank John Jackson. We'll see you next week, everybody. Transportation for guests of Overtime with Mike North provided by Charles Joseph Limousine Service. 312-623-1428. Clothing for Mr. North and Mr. Suntress designed by Arnold Brandt, courtesy of Executive Clothiers on Elmhurst Road in Prospect Heights. Signs of success. Experts in corporate and team apparel in Chicago. Call toll-free 1-877-SOS-6250. John Shaky Suntress for Overtime with Mike North, a Licorice Limited production.